In this video, we're going to talk about mouthing and chewing, a very common problem for puppies. Now, one of the things to consider is if your dog is mouthing or chewing, it's probably an indicator that it needs a nap. Dogs sleep 17 hours a day, puppies even more. If your dog is really mouthy, it comes up, especially if it's grabbing you and pulling you, that's a good indicator how long, you should consider how long has it been since the dog's had a nap. If it's been a while, put it in the puppy playpen. Now, one of the first things that I do when a puppy does that is I will yelp like another dog. If you see two dogs playing together, one of them bites too hard, they'll yelp, they kind of reset, they'll pause for a second, and then they'll go back at it. That's kind of a way of saying, hey, that was too hard. So we want to yelp like that. It's kind of like a, and the dogs will kind of stop, and then you can go back to it. If your dog keeps on jumping up on you, it probably means it's, it needs a nap. I would stand up so we take things away from the dog's purview of ability to chew us, cross our arm, and just remain stationary until the dog settles down, then you can go back to petting it. Teaching bite inhibition is a very important thing for dogs, so there should be zero tolerance. Its teeth cannot touch a human skin. Anytime it does, we're gonna give that yelp. Now, if the dog continues to yelp, another thing that you can do uh, we have uh, bones that look like the cartoon bones. They usually come in a packet of three. They're called Nyla bones. One of them would be a cookie, one of them's flexible, and one is rigid. You won't be able to bend it at all. You can also get the ones that are rigid, just don't bend. Now, I would have several of those, as well as other appropriate chew toys or antlers, um, real bones, uh, things along those lines. So what I do is anytime the dog comes up and it starts kind of trying to chew on my shoe or something like that, if I push it away, it's just gonna come back. Dogs only push each other when they're playing or humping. So if the dog does that, what I would do is pull out, let's say this is a bone and the dog's here. If I just put it in the dog's mouth, that's not very interesting. Dogs would prefer that I throw it or tease them and let them grab it and then feel like they win. So I would kind of, if the dog's mouth is here, I would kind of tap it here, tap it here, tap it up here, tease a little bit so the dog is trying to get it and then let it grab it and let it win and pull it away. Now the dog has something to occupy his mouth. I immediately go and pick up another chew bone and put it in my pocket so I always have one on me. So I would go and get yourself, go to Amazon, Nyla bone, get, don't just get the ones that look like a regular bone. I have one that looks like a forearm, one that looks like a dinosaur, one that looks like a chicken, I have one that's a donut size, different flavors. So a lot of variety, that way that we can redirect the dog's attention towards an appropriate chew toy as opposed to just taking something away. The dog's chewing something, we take it away, that must have been a really good item. I'm gonna to have to wait and remember that. Next time those shoes are around, I'm gonna chew them. We do not wanna let our dogs chew on inappropriate things. I see a lot of people give a dog a water bottle, an old belt, an old shoe, an old baseball, uh, soccer ball. Those are sort of things that give the dog into a habit of chewing those inappropriate things. And the dog can't tell the difference between an empty water bottle and a bottle of cleaning solution that could be poisonous. Um, let me see, what else? Uh, carrots are great chew, uh, things for dogs to chew, especially when you have a puppy. They're gonna go through teething. So what I do is I start out with uh, shredded carrots, and I sprinkle those on, we'll let you out in a second, sweetheart. We sprinkle some of those in the food, and they get a taste for it, so a little sugar in carrots. Next one is I get a little bit of uh, the baby carrots. If the dog is licking a surface, licking is usually an indicator that they're about to start chewing, they're trying to soften it up. So what I would do is if I go see the dog licking a piece of wood, I go in the furniture, in the, uh, in the furniture, I go in the fridge, pull out some baby carrots, uh, and if the dog is facing this way, chewing on this, I would tap the floor, tap the dog, and then drop the treats over here. The dog has to turn around completely away from whatever they were chewing on, and then they're carrots, and they lay down and eat those carrots. Carrots are nice and dense, they can ingest them, and it gives them something suitable to chew on. Soothing is, uh, chewing is a self-soothing behavior for puppies, and they're going to do a lot of it. So you can decide what your dog chews on or your dog can decide. I promise you, your dog has more expensive tastes. So go to Amazon, buy a bunch of expensive chew toy, or not expensive, but spend a hundred bucks on appropriate chew toys. I will have probably a link underneath this video uh, to a write-up that I have on Quest Ed that talks about different types of toys that you can get. I prefer Amazon, they're cheaper than going to Pet Farm or Petco. But just spending a hundred bucks and giving your dog a nice assortment of them is a great option. Uh, so we want to Yelp. Um, one last thing is if the dog is chewing something inappropriate, we would like to teach it to drop. And I guess I'll just do that in this video right now. A lot of times we just want to pull the thing away from the dog. That makes the dog want it. We, it makes what we call a high value item. So if the dog is chewing on something, instead of, if we make a big deal out of it, it'll run away and then it's a game that we're chasing and oh, I'm a dog, I like being chased. So I get a high value treat. I like using uh, tr uh, Tricky Trainers from Cloudstar. The yours are chicken liver. So what I do, it's a round treat like this. The dog's mouth is here, he's chewing on something. I just go over here and I touch the ends of their nose and I just hold it here. Dog will try to take the treat while they have the thing in their mouth. Don't give it to him, just hold it here. 
soon as they drop the item, put the item in the, put the treat in their mouth and say the word drop. Teaching your dog to drop is extraordinarily valuable if they're chewing inappropriate objects. Now there's a difference between chewing something I'm not allowed to have versus one of my toys. My toys I'm allowed access to all the time, so it's what we call a low value item. But a pair of you know, high heel shoes, I'm not allowed to have those. So it's a special treat. You have to treat them all, react to them all separately. But the way we do it is when the dog has an appropriate chew to uh, choice or nyla bone, something that they're allowed to have, just hold the treat out, they put it down, you put it in their mouth, say drop, then they get to go back and chew on the object again. So it's a win-win for them. They get the treat and then they go back, get it back chewing the thing. And we create a precedent so that we say drop and they just drop it expecting a treat. Next time when they have something they're not allowed to have, we say drop, boom, easy to drop. And then we, now if you do take a higher value item away from them, make sure you give them a better item, like a bully stick. Now we have two dogs over here, they're in the puppy playpen. You, let's go ahead and tilt the camera and shoot over there. We set up this puppy playpen, which is invaluable to have puppies. To Lula, the big dog is standing up, I put the, uh, uh, that's all right. I put the, uh, the bully stick in and she wasn't interested at first because she wanted to get out of the playpen. She can protest a little bit, we heard in the first and the second video, but after a while, she went over to investigate, and now she's enjoying chewing the bully stick. So that's a higher value chew item. So when your dog is chewing something that's inappropriate, then you do the drop, the dog drops it, you put the treat in the mouth, and after you take the object away, maybe you give her a bully stick, a chicken's foot, a trachea, a cow's ear. Something that's actual food, not a food item, but uh, an edible chewy. So that's a higher value chew item, and it's a good trade. Otherwise, the dog's like, I'm not gonna drop the really high value item because you're not gonna give it, me, give it back. But teaching your dog to drop will, will pay big dividends down the line. So this is how we can uh, stop our dog from chewing and come up with some other tricks that will help our dog stop chewing and learning to chew inappropriate objects.